Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Hosea 5. It almost smells like somebody's burning something outside. I smell burning wood. It's awful early. Who knows? Okay, let's get into this. And this is going to, well, it's kind of a takeoff from Hosea 4, I think. Um, the way it's worded in the first verse, it sounds like it. But this is impending judgment on Israel and Judah. And if you go back to the previous uh, chapter and read the last couple of verses, you can see like this is maybe is a continuation of that chapter. Hear this, O priests. Take heed, O house of Israel. Give ear, O house of the king. For yours is the judgment. Because you have been a snare to Mizpah and a net spread on Tabor. The revolters are deeply involved in slaughter, though I rebuke them all. I know Ephraim, and Israel is not hidden from me. For now, O Ephraim, you commit harlotry. Israel is defiled. Somebody's definitely burning out there. That sound smells close, too. <sighs> I want to go check on that. <laughs> Verse 4. They do not direct their deeds toward turning to their God, for the spirit of harlotry is in their midst, and they do not know the Lord. The pride of Israel testifies to his face. Therefore Israel and Ephraim stumble in their iniquity. Judah also stumbles with them. With their flocks and herds they shall go to seek the Lord, but they will not find him. He has withdrawn himself from them. They have dealt treacherously with the Lord, for they have begotten pagan children. Now a new moon shall devour them and their heritage. Blow the ram's horn in Gibeah, the trumpet in Ramah. Cry aloud at beth -Avon. Look behind you, O Benjamin. Ephraim shall be desolate in the day of rebuke. Among the tribes of Israel I make known what is sure. The princes of Judah are like those who remove a landmark. I will pour out my wrath on them like water. That's what's going to happen with the agreement, the peace agreement. They're trying to push that big time right now. Verse 11, Ephraim is oppressed and broken in judgment because he willingly walked by human precept. Therefore, I will be to Ephraim like a moth and to the house of Judah like rottenness. When Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah saw his wound, then Ephraim went to Assyria and sent to King Jerob. Yet he cannot cure you nor heal you of your wound. For I will be like a lion to Ephraim, and like a young lion to the house of Judah. I, even I, will tear them and go away. I will take them away, and no one shall rescue. I will return again to my place till they acknowledge their offense. Then they will seek my face. In their affliction, they will earnestly seek me. So, this isn't just uh, specifically the tribulation. The impression I'm getting from this is he's talking about the whole 1900 years of exile all the way up to that final seven years of tribulation. Because after 70 AD they were scattered. Almost no, no Jews lived in Israel. And after a period of time the uh, Palestinians ended up taking part of it over uh, but it's always been desolate until 1948. And so it seems quite clear to me that he's talking about he's going to return to his place until they start to acknowledge it. That that seems to indicate to me, and I may be wrong, but that that's this whole 1900 years that they've been gone out of their country, almost 1900 years. And then it's going to culminate in the final day that he's referencing several times here, the tribulation, the end, when they actually seek his face. And in their affliction, they will earnestly seek me, verse 15. That's going to be at the three and a half year mark when they are flet, flung out into places south, what we think is will probably be Petra, and hide there. And at that time is when they're going to realize the truth. At that time is when they're going to see their light. It's so amazing to witness, too, that how people have, over the years, started to realize, okay, well, this looks like this is the most likely spot for them to hide. How amazing there's a, a church of sorts here. And all these supplies have been laid up, and, and all these caves have been prepped, and all this stuff has been set up down there. 
and all these Bibles have been wrapped in plastic and stuck into the nooks and crannies and holes in the rocks, hidden under sand, buried, put in corners where people couldn't see them, and pages torn out, tearing them, Isaiah 53 out, and folding it up, and putting it with notes, saying, we love you, your Christian brother or sister from this country. We love you and pray that you seek the Lord, because Jesus Christ is your Messiah, and he is coming back. And so many of these things are left down there that when they get there and they start to find these things, it's going to speak to them quite clearly and they will cry out to him, Lord, we have made such a terrible mistake. And the Lord has already got it set up. He's already prepared it. He's already, it, it, like, just like we talked about in morning devotion, about the blessing that God pours out and how it, the far reaching, you know how long they've been doing that down there and how much of that stuff's there, there ready for them? That even the Saudi Arabians on their side of it because their border's right there. Even they've been preparing because they believe it. And they're not even Christian. So it's amazing to witness. Amazing to witness. God doing his work, pouring out his blessing, and how it's started and it's been spreading through other people all the way out to that point, that three and a half year mark, when they flee through that valley in the mountain of Olive, Mount of Olives that the Lord makes when he puts his feet down on them. And they run and they go and hide. And the Lord defends them and protects them for that three and a half years. That blessing spreads out and spreads out and spreads out. A perfect example of it. How amazing. You just imagine what it's going to be like when they get there. And when they start to realize the truth, we'll get to see part of it because we'll get to see at the end when it's all said and done. We're going to be there with the Lord. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to seeing the, the, the glory of the Lord being promoted and praised and lifted up by his own people. God is angry and he's going to pour out his wrath and his judgment on those who deserve it. Those who chose to be his enemy. But at the same time, he's going to be pouring out mercy and grace on all those who would receive him. And on his own people. And as much as we read about tribulation, we read even more about mercy and grace. And that's our God. So that was Hosea 5. Pretty simple. Hosea 6 is going to be a very interesting one. And I believe it is a kickoff from Hosea 5. And it is titled A Call to Repentance. And it has a very interesting series of verses at the beginning that we're going to read tomorrow. With some pretty interesting insinuations about that time frame at the end when they're hiding. Alright, guys, I love y'all. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.